Introduced in 2257 by order of Chancellor Lorel, and intended as a symbol of cooperation between the now united Klingon houses, the D7 class battlecruiser is one of the most iconic and well renowned warships in the history of the Alpha Quadrant, as well as a design trailblazer that would go on to inspire elements of Klingon space frames well into the 24th century. At a length of 228 meters, the D7 class presents a simple and versatile frame, featuring a long and narrow neck structure connecting the bow module to the broader aft section and drive systems. The ship carries 430 Klingon warriors, whose duties are balanced between standard ship operation and serving as marines in the event of a boarding action. The vessel carries powerful deflector shields as well as layered armor plating, while still maintaining an impressive level of sublight agility for so durable a vessel. The D7 is armed with two powerful nacelle-mounted disruptor cannons, as well as lower strength disruptor emitters across the bow and secondary hull. These weapons are supplemented by a large, mounted torpedo launcher that can be loaded with probes or magnetic pulse weapons, in addition to standard photon torpedoes. As is often the case with Imperial Klingon warships, the D7's weapon orientations are almost entirely bow-focused, designed for firepower rather than coverage, and reliant on careful maneuvering and pursuit tactics by Klingon commanders. The D7 was also equipped with a standard-issue cloaking device, a technology that was relatively new to the Klingon Empire, and had only recently become commonplace on newly commissioned warships. Warships. Though these early devices were vulnerable to metaphasic sweeps and tachyon detection grids, they still provided a distinct advantage against an unprepared enemy, and could allow a Klingon commander to bring his considerable forward weapons complement to bear for a lethal opening salvo. These systems also proved valuable on a strategic scale, as they allowed Klingon battlegroups to conceal their numbers from observers, or even feed misinformation to a prying enemy by deliberately decloaking small portions of a fleet for brief periods. The D7 developed something of a historic rivalry with the equally iconic Constitution-class starships of the Federation Starfleet that was not dissimilar to the ancient juxtaposition of the Messerschmitt 109 and Supermarine Spitfire in Earth's Second World War. While both the D7 and Constitution were exceptionally advanced and sophisticated vessels for their time, the warrior ethos of the Klingon Empire naturally provided the D7 with an advantage in arms over its Federation counterpart. The Constitution did boast more powerful shield technology, however, and generally offered a a far wider mission profile outside of combat than the D7 could hope to match. The D7's reputation for lethality eventually became so widespread that it caught the attention of the Romulan Star Empire, a nation who would ordinarily be completely unwilling to acknowledge the superiority of a Klingon warship. Their respect for the design extended far enough that they ultimately made efforts to acquire the vessels for their own fleet, with some being acquired through reluctant trade with the Klingon Empire, and others being simply commandeered or salvaged. This is often seen as a historical irony, given that the Klingon Klingon Empire has advanced its own fleet using stolen Romulan technology a great many times throughout its history. While the D7 was ultimately phased out in the 2270s, the Empire was not ready to abandon this popular design, and a new variant was quickly introduced in the form of the Katinga class battlecruiser. The Katinga was closely based on the D7, and simply offered a number of direct technological updates to keep pace with the nations of the Quadrant. Ultimately, the Katinga proved to be an even more long-standing success than the D7, remaining in frontline service for the rest of the 23rd century, and as a support vessel across the full length of the 24th century. Though battlecruiser designs generally waned in popularity within the Empire, following the prominent rise of the Klingon Bird of Prey, the D7 never faded from memory, and has become closely associated with some of the Empire's greatest victories. When legendary Klingon warriors brought ruin to the enemies of the Empire in the great battles of Caleb IV and Clack de Kelbracht, they did so from the command decks of D7-class battlecruisers, and as the deeds of Kang, Koloth, and Kor are are recounted in chorus, so too will songs be sung of the mighty D7 for as long as there are warriors to sing them. Thank you for watching Space Doc. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.